out of nowhere, people just start going, wait a second, you can just max Heartstopper. Because Heartstopper is 2.3% health degen per second. And it's also the old status buff combined into one. Yeah, so the value of good. each skill point is like nuts, right? And if you look at the scalability of Death Pulse, it's actually not that good. Like, yeah, it, it goes up by, I think it's like 100 damage at level one. It goes to like 150, 200, 250. So the scaling is pretty meh. So people are, are putting more points into the hard stopper now. And this hero just, he wins the lane. That's what he does. The longer you're there, the more harass you get. You got sustain for your teammates now. You got an Oracle as well. So if you get false promise, this hero benefits amazingly from that. Because not only do you have the amplification from healing from false promise, but you also have ghost shroud. Yeah. So you heal to like full, you have like 10 charge stick full HP. That's crazy. And what, what about the, you said he wins the lane. So tiny versus necro, are you not worried about like the burst damage of tiny at all? Or it, it just won't come into play until Well, later? It, it does, it doesn't come into play in the lane. Yeah. It will come into play during like the, the mid game and stuff. If he gets ganked, sure. Maybe, maybe no one uh, gets killed, you know, once or twice. Because they do have the nature's profit. So like if the, if Pi goes mid and they get a silence on him and stuff and he TPs, I could very easily see him dying to that. Yeah. But uh, if it's just like a vacuum 1v1, the problem is he plays the War of Attrition and he'll always win. Because even if you have a decent amount of regen, Heartstopper just trumps it. And as long as he's getting last hits, especially for melee, it's really annoying because you're going to try to go for a last hit. He's going to death pulse you. You're going to take damage, like one or two auto attacks. He's going to heal off the creeps that he killed, and he's going to heal from his own news. So it just over time, you just get whittled down, whittled down. And this is a zero base armor hero as well on Titan. So I think that he'll be okay in the lane. All right. And that means elsewhere, it's going to be the, the same pairing. Pasha and Roger going top. Roger, obviously, we've just seen him. He doesn't really even go to the lane that often. Maybe level three, he'll show up, but just jungles it up. They'll be going against Pilot Die, the Grimstroke. We didn't talk much about him. This, this Grimstroke plus Spectre does feel good when you get, like, level six, but can Pilot Die protect uh, the, the, the Spectre enough in lane? I guess he doesn't really um, have to if it's just a Pango. Yeah, if it's just Pango, I think the lane will be manageable. That's also another really good point. It's the fact that Spectre will be okay because there's an Enigma in the game. I know that sounds weird, yeah, but it's just because of how VP play it. They don't direct lane pressure. I think Roger denies maybe like one or two range creeps because obviously the jungle doesn't spawn until one minute. Yeah. So if he denies like two range creeps, then just pure jungles and leaves Pasha up here until he has a Dom, the Spectre will get a little bit, right? And even if his tower gets taken, he's going to have a power. He can, you know, retreat to the triangle, whatever. And he can find his farm there. So I, I don't think it's too bad. Are you surprised we're seeing jungling again? Like, honestly, after what, like the nerf two years ago? Are you surprised there's just actually a jungler again? I think it's just because it's so hard to punish it right now in like the first, you know, five to ten minutes. Okay. And and think about the way that VP play it as well, right? It, as much as they don't really focus on the, the lane denies as much as like, say, a team like EG, they go dumb every game and they take your tower every game. So even if he's not having like the most insane lane presence, he is ensuring an objective pretty early on. And right now, Maneski don't have the heroes to, to really cope with it. So what they have done is they've placed a ward, right? They've blocked one of his camps. Yeah. So that's going to be something that he'll have to address directly, or maybe he just walks in and, and takes a small camp like we saw him do in the previous match. Well, middle, we see no one get every last hit of the tower. Pretty impressive as a Necro, especially. And then bottom, the other lane we didn't talk about, Febby is going to be pulling the creeps here. It's, it's a tough lane, so he's going to be pulling them around. And it is the, the, the core uh, Nature's Prophet. Are you a fan of it? I think it's fine for this game. Because you can you can go like the team fight build if you want. You can go the Doom build where you go for like the Orchid, the Drums, Phase, into like Nullifier or something like that, and a BKB. Because Furion's that hero that just buys whatever. Like, if your team needs Lockdown, he'll buy the the Orchid into Nullifier. If you need team fight, he'll buy the Pipe, the Crimson, the anything you need. He'll just buy it. And plus, he's just good in lane. So I, I don't have an issue with him being a farming hero at all. Febby's doing the same thing again, by the way. He did the pull where he went all the way through middle lane and then back to the, the tier three bottom. I wonder why. I guess just the timing of it, it meets with the creeps, I suppose. Yeah, you get the full wave deny. And it, it, this one's also really hard to just directly contest. So. Yeah. We'll the other thing, too, is the Dire offlane is actually just, like, 
I'll be honest, it's it should. Like the dire offline sucks. So because the poll from uh VP side, they can do the poll from the large camp to the lane into the tower. Like yeah. the pull timing is so loose, the creeps go so far, you can do it pretty much at any point. And plus, if you look between the tier one and the tier two, it's really hard to keep the creeps in a way that they're not getting hit by the tower. There's much more space between the Radiant Tier 1 and Tier 2 for tower range than there is for the Dire, which is good for the Radiant offlane because that means that you can easily pull it between the Tier 1 and the Tier 2, and you're not going to get the creeps hit by the tower. Like, the, the Dire offlane is so much worse than the Radiant offlane that it's actually insane that it hasn't been changed. Yeah. Well, they're looking for Pasha here. Pasha will just jump away, though. Use the Swashbuck get out of there while Ajit farms 13-2. Middle lane, Moon. Moon has to be careful here. He will back out as a health potion. His, so he is, he went 2-0-1 at level 3 on the Necro. He is maxing the Death Bolt still, looks like. Yeah, he's favoring the Harass a little bit more. Uh, I don't think he'll be getting a point to go Shroud for a while, though. Yeah, no no reason to right in this lane. Yeah, that's the big one. And the other thing, too, is this this hero is pretty EXP hungry. Like, you do want the high levels and a hard stopper, because the scaling is, is crazy. It's 0.6 health, degen per point. And then it's also increasing your uh, the sadist effect, right? The health and the mana regen per creep yeah. kill. But that's why he'll eventually just pull ahead in the lane. Because he's not going to have to ferry as much regen. He's got double null compared to the one bracer that Moon has. And the, the longer that Moon stays in the lane, if he's in range of Hearthstopper, this is just, again, it's, it's the war of attrition. Yeah, he does get some nice denies there, though, in front of him. Tree grab will take harass. And, yeah, Spectre will just be farming top. What does Pasha do in this lane? He just, just is there? You, you don't really, like, you don't you can't do anything up here, right? Both heroes are actually happy from Maneski and VP. Okay. Because Pasha's getting EXP, which is pretty much all he wants. And Spectre's getting creeps, which is pretty much all he wants. So both heroes are getting what they want out of the lane. What it's, what's going to matter is, like, uh, actually mid lane. No one getting tossed into the tower here. But he will be fine. But I think it's more about, um, like, what Pasha does with, like, his level 6. So his timing is going to be earlier. Obviously, he's a pango. He doesn't rely on items. He's going to be using his Rolling Thunder to make stuff happen. If he can do a lot with this early game, then it will it will have been worth it. But if eventually Aja just becomes unkillable, like, death machine with the power and stuff, then obviously it won't be worth it. But it's, yeah. it's impossible to tell now. Well, Roger just jungling. Gets his level 4. 5-minute bounty runes might be the... Might, when do you think we're seeing the first blood? Is he going to come at the 5 minutes here at a rune fight? Um... Doesn't look like anyone's like really rotating over runes. Okay. At bottom, I could definitely see there being a kill. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. No one looked like he was gonna go fight bottom, but then he sees Moon Teepee's back middle, and there, well, there's gonna be the first blood. It will yeah, be on Febby well. bottom. Yep. Yeah. And the runes that opens him up. Solo gets one, but KP will get the other. Meanwhile, top. Uh oh, pilot eye. They're actually gonna run at Roger. He won't be able to take the sons up quite yet. Will get nuked, but he can just TP out instead. Try to farm the idolons here. Denies it. Nice job. So, yeah, this the first is, uh, it's a it's a pretty quiet early game though. Like everything considered, and a three for one bounty run in favor of Maneski is going to be something they're pretty happy about. So, is it just the heroes? Is it? I mean, is it just because you have a Magnus Nature's Prophet? You, you don't really get a kill in that lane, right? You have a Grim Spectre in the other lane. Just uh oh, oh pilot, I was just going to chase down. It just feels like the heroes are a lot different than the first two games. Yeah, they are for sure. Like. The, the, the static lane pressure that Maneski can put out uh, with the Furion and the Mag isn't like... Mag is not the best laner, but the Furion will be able to get farm pretty much no matter how the game goes, so I think KP's going to be okay with just having, like, you know, 25 CS at 6 minutes. It's not phenomenal, but, you know, it's good enough. And plus he can TP around the map and make things happen. Yeah, so... Boom. Toss back and KP's TPing here. This might be a kill known. He does get the Ghost Shroud. Looks like at 5, but... There's a Febby here too. There's a there's a couple heroes here this from the Dire. Game. They do. Only missing Scooby or Shaggy, and they're just gonna get the kill. Who's gonna get it? It's Febby. Smacks him down. You get the kill. Is is that worth it? I mean, it's a kill on the middle, but that's four heroes. Yeah, that was a very very big commitment. But we mentioned it during the draft, right? They TP in the Furion. They bring another hero or whatever. They can definitely kill him. Yeah. But it's telling that it takes that much just to take him down. That's uh. It's not really a good sign for Maneski, but a big, a value kill, nonetheless. Yeah. And well, 
Mana boots up on Febby again, so he's got some farm. Meanwhile, uh-oh, Spectre will survive. No, the Javelin proc. Pasha hits him with it, and that feels bad. Yo, you need to be careful, Pine. This guy could definitely just walk at you. No mana, so... We'll get out, but all of a sudden, VP gets some good kills. Bottom lane as well. They're looking for KP. They bring him down. That's going to be three. Will they get it? He's trying to run. The axes will slow him down enough. Solo gets the kill. Now, Febby even. Uh-oh, they're trying to body block, but he just dies. Wow, and all of a sudden, this is looking a little bit more like game two than it is like game one. VP, 2K ahead at seven minutes now out of nowhere. Yeah, the Necrophos is doing work mid. Like, Moon's falling behind. Like, even with the gank. You yeah. Know? That's the thing, right? Like, even if, uh, like, they just give it so much, it doesn't matter that he died there. He's just, he's winning the lane still. Uh-oh, I don't know what Solo's doing, though. He dodges all the damage, though. He meant to do that. Damn. Hey, Waste it. his mana. Good spell. Yeah, it is. I mean, to be honest, the reaction for Moon was pretty slow. Like, he fades Edict before the Avalanche even came out. Because if yeah. you start casting Ava, you don't, the cast point's too long to actually put the skill out. He could have just waited like two seconds and just killed him. Dude, they're going, they're looking for, this is again it. They're getting it the kill, but it's a, it's another four-man commitment. But Roger is level six. I just realized both supports were three on Mineski before that, and Roger was six. So at least you get a little, oh my god, Pi almost just dies to Eidolons. Chill out. Trying to get a little bit of that gold, you know? So what do you want to see? I mean, Tiny doesn't even have boots. Like, he's your playmaker, right? This guy needs to needs to get some farm, it feels like. Well, I mean, that's why they're bringing in so many heroes, right? Because yeah. they, they can't just let VP run rampant all over their side of the map. They got to make sure that they're they're doing something because they're, they're waiting for the Spectre to come online. Uh, the Nature's Prophet actually has ulti now, which is huge, and he has earned. So he's recognizing the fact, like, hey, we need items to do stuff, like, now. Yeah. Because there are our lanes are just not really maybe doing as well as we want to barring our top lane. So now they got the haunt, they got the the wrath of nature. They have the ability to to kill with a lot less investment now. Yeah. Let's see, as you see, Ajit just farming looks like level two in power on top of him. They are stacking still, but it looks like Radiant actually blocked that stack closest to Roshan. And now middle, some damage coming out. It's it's Moon. It's gonna be tough to kill either way, obviously with the. Uh, ton of armor on Tiny. It, where do you want to see his first Necro tier? Does he just sit middle? Like, there, there's no reason for him to leave, right? Yeah, I think he just pretty much sit mid for a while. Feels like VP's happy with just sitting anywhere, right? Like, all three lanes. And, well, there we go. The the, the, the normal from an SK, a four-man commitment. They will get the kill again. And they don't use the Spectre ulti, which is, is pretty nice. So they still have that. And he's just clearing up some stacks. Isn't empowered, though, because Febby's getting chased out. Here comes the roll. Can he dodge it? No. Will he bounce back? Sure will. And uh-oh. He's bouncing back again? Needs mana. Nope. Roger will just kill him. See you later, Febby. This game just feels bad for Maneski already, right? Like, your Spectre is your, your big guy. But he doesn't even have empower. He's just farming jungle without it. Yeah, it's, it's also a little bit different than a hero like TB where you can pop meta and yeah. just feel really strong with the same amount of net worth. Spectre doesn't really have that effect. Spectre actually needs the items. She's trying. Lower and all. Here we go. Here comes Fabi now. Hit him with it. There you go. It's still only level 3, but better than nothing. Bottom lane, KP's trying to zone out, but Ramsey's. We haven't talked much about him. Double Wraith, Phase Boots, 1.2k. Looks like he's going for the Battle Fury. What's our net worth looking like? It is actually a Spectre in first. Are, are you surprised? or? I mean, he had the, the easiest lane, I feel. Because it was it was pretty much solo Pasha, and it's 10 minutes in, and their tower's still alive. This is actually a bit slower of a Tier 1 tower siege than we saw in the previous two games when they were playing Enigma. So the fact that his tower is alive means that he had a, a cushier time. Tango, Mana Boots, Javelin now, Bottle as well, Roger has the helm, uh-oh, here comes Moon though, they get the silence off, they're gonna look, oh my goodness, he tosses back the Spectre Illusion, they are gonna get the stun though, they wanna at least kill Roger, they trap Min, looks like he will go down, Pasha will make it out, but, Moon, gotta be careful with those tosses when Spectre ulties a little miscommunication, but the problem is they're commit so much, look at middle, we'll just get pushed in by Siege Unit as well as no one. Here we go. Uh-oh. Right. Is he actually going to roll? No, the Avalanche will cancel. Not sure if he canceled himself. No, he's just going. And oh, he's going to get ulted. He will get stunned. Are they going to ulti Febby? They sure as hell are. See you later, Alligator. Febby dead for 40 seconds and 11 minutes in. Now they're going to chase down Grimstroke. He has boots, but one more. Nope, the toss. 
tries to help. They can't do anything. They might chase down Moon, actually. And here we go. They get the lucky shot. He gets, like, four procs. They're just going to right-click him. I think VP's just running over this laning phase. Eight to yeah, four. This is, oh. this is looking real, real bad right now. This is this is the worst game I think we've seen. I mean, it, they do have a Spectre, but you got to realize 6K at 12 minutes in with no one this farmed. That's just, that's yeah. insanely scary. The other thing, too, is, like, the Furion's building in the Vessel, which is a very good item against Necro, but there's an Oracle. Yep. Which Purges. means that it can get just get purged off right away, and then, you know, even if it doesn't, you got Fate's Edict, you got False Promise, like, there are ways to protect this guy during fights. The, the Spectre's job is, is basically to hit R, isolate a hero, and kill it. But at this rate, like, they've already lost all three of their Tier 1s, it's 12 minutes in, the Troll has eclipsed anyone else now for the top net worth, making his way towards a farm accelerant, and the Necro has a mech in Arcanes. Like, this guy's gonna have Greaves, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, that's insane. And they're just gonna push this tier. Do you talk about tier 1s being down? They're looking for even more. And they should just get it. I don't think you can defend this tier 2, right? No reason to, I guess. Yeah, it's it's too much. Like, if you don't have haunts, you don't have RP because you use it to try to stop the uh, the Pango from going in. That's one thing, actually, that we didn't talk about a lot is Pi's not 6 yet. Pi, if he gets 6, it's going to be a lot easier to deal with Pasha. Yeah. Because then you can just, you know, throw out the Soulbind. Hopefully it, it tethers to someone and you don't have to worry about the Rolling Thunder being, like, quite as annoying. And having to commit, like, an RP to it just sucks. Like, you don't want to have to do that. Yeah. Well, Roger, he's over here. He's just jungling on the Dire side. He's doing, he actually doing their stacks. Oh, that feels so bad if you're the Spectre. Ramsey will come clean up, too. And you've just, you've lost all control of this triangle. I guess that Tier 2 tower going down means that. I don't know. The Spectre's just going to be forced to farm top, it feels like, the, the rest of the game. I don't even actually know if they could hold their high ground. Yeah, I was like, thinking about that. It doesn't look good. It's been, if they had the Guardian Greaves, for sure not, but it's still a 1,000 away there. But two Tier 2s down at the 14-minute mark already. Solo actually scoops up the tower. And oh, they're TPing in. Oh, Ramsey's game. going. He wants to go for Pilot. Can he kill him before it goes up? No, but he'll just pick off the silence. So get some gold. Pile TP out. Double damage. Right, are they going to give to the troll and do Roche with it? Looks like they're saving it. I mean, they, they could. I was yeah, thinking. Ramsey's walking over. And well, here they go. They do have the Dark Troll Summoner as well to help tank for him. And there we go. This Roche is going down pretty damn quick with just the Battle Fury Troll, obviously, with the double damage. Looks like bottom is going to get pushed in, but that tower's almost at full HP. The Tier 1. Holy smokes. Yeah, they, they didn't get much done in the lane with the Furion, unfortunately. Like, Furion is one of the better laners, but he was with a mag. So it's like you have a really great laner with a really not great laner. Yeah, and that's... I mean... I guess we didn't really tie about it. Yeah, that feels bad. Like, you, you put this fear on. We, I, I assume we thought he was going to be five until the Grim came out. And it just feels like, yeah, Spectre is the only one who really even did anything in her lane. She is keeping up, though. She's doing a good job, even though she lost some of her stacks. She went Soul Ring Spectre. I, I myself have not seen that, but. It's all right. I mean, you get the 150 mana, you just dagger. Like, every time it's up, you get some a little bit of extra regen and stuff. And you know you're going to be spending a majority of your time in the woods anyway. So, just the, it's a farm accelerant, to be honest, on a hero like Spectre. And it also always means that you'll be able to haunt. Because it gives you the exact amount of mana that you need to be able to cast a spell. We see Moon. We see a tip middle. It's just, he finally has his blink there. It's in his stash. But at 15 minutes, you thought this tiny was going to... You were probably hoping he was going godlike or something, ganking around the map. And they're just five manning on VP now. Like, three or four manning, I should say. And you can't stop them. They're going high ground here, Drasko. Yeah, the Necro shut him down really hard. Like, the, that matchup, it's really hard for the Tiny because you want to abuse the fact that you have really high base damage and stuff and you manipulate Creep Aggro, but against Heartstopper and stuff and this Death Pulse spam, it's, it's, it's a lot. This power is just dead. It just felt like that was a really good 10th pick, right? Because everyone considers Necro a Spectre counter, too. So you get the lane counter, yeah. you get the Spectre, you're, you're just feeling pretty good. Oh, this they feels... do the trick. KP trying to save a little bit, but it won't. There goes the range Rex at least. Looks like they'll back out. Pasha's smoked. Maybe not. He's smoked. He's ulting. They're just toying around. And there's going to be a stun toss combo. Will come out. Does a little bit of damage. Shockwave pulls him in. There's going to be a silence on Nature's Prophet. Is he going to roll? No. Nature's Prophet shrinks in the back line. Scouting everything out. 
Dude, this siege unit's just been, this Helm of the Dominator creep just been slowly chipping it down. But there we go. Toss all the way back. He does have Aegis. They miss it, though. I, I appreciate the effort. I'm sure the Oracle might have saved him either way. It just feels, you're 11k down in 17 minutes, right? You could be some of the best players in the game, and you're just full items down. This is such a hard defense. Oh, oh lord. 50 he seconds. Buyback, he buys back, but does. does it even matter? Like, what does he do if he buys back? All he has is a spear vessel. That feels so bad. This is just yeah, a beat down. This is by far the most one-sided game we have seen, for sure. Fabi is going to save his teammate, but he's dead. I mean, it's, it, is it just over, Draskal? It sure feels late. Like, this Spectre... Spectre does have a Manta, but you, you can't kill anyone, right? Even solo, yeah, it feels not, like unkillable. I'm not sure how they, they do anything for this, honestly. I mean, maybe they get some crazy toss play like we saw before, and they, they execute it well and, and put ramps into Tier 4s, but yeah. barring hey, that, like, I don't know. I guess Pasha could roll into the Fountain again. That didn't even matter, though. And they're just going to take another rat. Look at this, slow and steady. Not even that slow. It's just 17 minutes in. They don't have that many items, but they're just... They're taking this base like it's 40 minutes in. Damn, they can't do it. You got it. Okay, what do you do if you're Manette? You have to do something, right? You can't just watch your base die. Here we go. They're going to go for it. Do. Does he get it? They skewer him back. There's going to be a Spectral on the backside. We're going to be looking. Ramses is still alive. Has the Aegis. They can't even do anything. The Necrophos doesn't feel like he's taking any damage. It's time. They get the go-ahead. Pilot die goes down. They trap no one in, but he's just going to get healed up. Pretty much full heals. He does. All right. And now your haunt is down. You... The, the game's over, let's be real here. They're gonna yeah, hold on as long as they can, but this game is over. I don't think there's any way they can hold it. Like, it just gets worse, right? Like, every building you lose, it gets worse and worse, and they're not getting All anything right. in this time. Yeah. But Ramses did stop hitting the creeps, so they didn't get the, the, the super creeps for the 1830 mark. But they get another kill. Ramses will get ulted out. He'll just get healed up. Solo. Or used his health potion, so he won't have it on the backside. Roger just diving him. They can just go for bottom because they've already taken them all. There's going to be a toss back. There's going to be a black hole, though. It's going to hit on the two of them. The javelins do a lot of damage. They do get a stun on the backside, though. Moon already has just died. He is going to buy back. They're looking. Ah, oh, shit. They're, they're just trying, man. They are defend. They're trying to defend. There's going to be an ulti. Won't quite kill the Spectre off, though. So now they don't have that Necro ulti. They could be a little more scared. Solo looking to die as well. Oh, my God. He heals himself. He will die to Feppy. KP getting run down by some creeps. Ramses. Sees the glyph and are they gonna have to back out all the way? No, they're definitely not. They're just chilling in the base. Aw oh, shit. Knows he really can't die without that necro ulti, so he's playing a little more aggressive, but VP doesn't care. They're still just sitting in the base. Look at Solo's actually running all the way back. This this is their house now. Yeah, the problem is the sustain. That that's the real issue right now for Mineski, because normally you'd be able to like whittle them down over time. And eventually some hero gets too low, you pop the haunt, you get the kill because he's sitting at like half HP. But between the Necrophos heals, the Guardian Greaves, the Urn on the Oracle, the Purifying Flames, like there's never a point where anyone on BP are low enough health to where Mineski can actually go in. That's the problem. Like the Necro pick, probably the sickest pick that I've seen so far. Yeah, in, in this group stage, uh, out of this particular group at least. What was that one you liked yesterday? There, there's another one you really liked. Oh, I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, I can just look at the drafts really quick once I got them up. I actually forget. I remember, but yeah, th this one, it just, it, it won him the lane. It won him the game. That's what it felt like. Pasha yeah. actually ends up going down. He bought the perfect items, too. Yeah. Like, Greaves in a pipe. It's, I, I don't know what you're supposed to do against this. Well, range drags. Pasha just went in and died in the base again. I think maybe he just this pango he has to do it once a game. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a quota. You gotta meet the blink into the well one time per game. Yeah, it, it feels pretty nice. Well, he's got a blink. He's rolling on through, going for the Yules next. Double bracer on solo. And they're just gonna slowly lose. It feels like they're gonna try to do something. There's gonna be a toss over. Ramses, he doesn't have the Aegis right, so it is scary, but he has the SNY and a Morbid Mask. Now, oh, even more sustained. He just nets it, he just kills KP. He just, ooh, wait up. Now he dies. And he'll get ulted as well. He's just going to run after Moon. If he gets a net, we are going to see an ulti on the backside on Febby. He'll be dead for an extra 60. They are going to get a double silence. Here comes the Spectral. Last chance. Black Hole hasn't been committed because he doesn't even have it up. Just throws the Midnight Pulse down and, well, yeah, they call it, they, they see the Spectral literally doing nothing. And they're like, well, okay, we lost. And Draskal, this was, this was a beatdown. No, no, no other way to put it.
Yeah, it was rough. The Spectre was a bit too slow. Like, there are some heroes <clears throat> that you can uh, pick when you have somebody like Empower that are going to be able to at least contribute to the fights and stuff. Yeah. But Spectre just, it's not enough. Like, you need something that's going to hit hard and be able to, to get the kill and move on 